the meeting, so welcome everyone to the Finance and Projects Committee meeting today. Um, we have both public and public excluded sessions. Um, just to note, um, yeah, no, no, I've received no apologies. I don't think there is any apologies. Mayor, you haven't received any apologies from anyone? No, thank you. Um, do we need to, do we need to move them, do we? Um, declarations of interest, is there any? Any declarations of interest? No? No? Okay. Um, no public forum. We do have two um, major later items. One in public, which is the approach to the naming of the museum that um, is on the agenda, but it's a late item. And then in public excluded, we have um, Invococal Central Limited Funding Status Report, which will be covered in public excluded. So can I have a mover and a seconder to um, receive those later items, being the naming of the museum and the Invococal Central? Thanks, Thank Tom. You. Thanks, Leslie. All those in favour? No, Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Um, and the reasons for those, just probably should have stated this before we moved it, um, those items weren't ready in time for the publication of the agenda, so um, that's why. Right, we're in tight. Okay, so um, first item is the minutes of the meeting for finance and projects held at Council Chamber on Tuesday the 18th of April. So can I have a move? Thanks, Second Rangi. Day. Seconder, Leslie. Um, all those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Any discussion? No, none. Okay, cool. Um, the next item is the minutes of the Extraordinary Meeting of Finance and Projects Committee held on the 9th of May, Tuesday the 9th of May. Can I have a mover and a second over that, please? Move Thanks. Those. Thanks, Darren and Leslie. Um, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Okay. Any discussion? No. Well, uh, um, um, next item is the minutes of the extraordinary meeting for finance and projects committee um, held Tuesday, twenty second of May. Mover and seconder. Thanks. Mary. Seconder. Thanks, Leslie. Okay, any discussion? That being none, I'll put that to the meeting. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Okay. Right. Um, automate strategic capital projects. Um, can I have a mover and a seconder to receive this report, please? Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Rangi. Okay. Lee, welcome. Afternoon, Chair. Committee. So I'll take the report as read, but as I typically do, I'll just run through a bit of a summary on of each of the projects on the dashboard. Um, City Street, stage one. Obviously, this project's now incomplete, and we're now going through the defects uh, period, and we're just awaiting a final report from the project team to close out all the um, accounts and bits and pieces with that. It's estimated to come incredibly close to our budget, as you'll see on the dashboard. And like I say, just as we're working out a few of the last accounts, um, by the time we come to the next the next uh, committee, that will be closed. Stair Street Stop Bank, as with City Streets, it's in a defects phase. Uh, we're just closing out that. That one actually is a, a little bit further along in its closeout period. And again, we're showing just a, a small um, under budget there of a couple of hundred thousand which is good. Uh, there's a few little tidy up and teething things that the team are working on there, and that's around um, landscaping and people using that berm near the airport, which the team are working on, um, uh, around parking and stuff on the berm there is uh, on Airport Ave. So that's a little um, a little bit of something that we're working on through that. The Branks on Water Main. Uh, so stage one is now complete, practically complete from a more projects uh, standpoint so that is technically complete now we're in a defects period for brank song stage one so that pipe has all now been tested those who use the north road will notice there's still a 
a little bit of work just near prime range meets there as we're closing up the testing chamber uh, and doing that that'll be done over the next uh, few days hopefully um, one good thing is we've now moved a contractor into um, with a letter of award for stage two and three so in the next wee while we'll be able to um, put out a bit more communications about that we've managed to secure a contractor from South Canterbury to come down to Invercargill and help us deliver the next few stages of uh, Brankstone. It's been an incredibly difficult project for us to tender in the market. We've put it out a number of times and had one response which has been unfortunately really you know, quite a bit over our budget. So we had to really, the teams really had to think out the box um, on this one and we've had to canvas a lot of councils and other organizations like us that have done projects like this and try to find someone that's got a lot of experience and in finding someone with that's got a lot of experience um, they're able to price it a lot more competitively and a lot closer to our budget it's a little bit disappointing we haven't been able to use local resources for it um, but we've got a project partner now that's got lots and lots of experience and a lot more aligned with our budget uh, so that'll happen uh, very quickly over the next couple of months you'll start to see um, these contractor vehicles in town Rugby Park, so obviously we've had a um, couple of meetings with the committee on that and the next stage of Rugby Park has been approved. So we're into so that stakeholder meetings and we've had a couple of um, meetings on site with designers and consultants looking at the strengthening works and looking at other bits and pieces that need to be done through the park. So that's now wheels are rolling on that one. So it's great to get that one off the ground. The cab continues to be a bit of a challenge. We had planned to bring a report to you guys um, at this meeting, and I apologize for that. We're still uh, trying to work out that one. That's quite a complicated puzzle. Um, so we've now gone through the whole um, building assessment phase of that. So now we understand really from a building maintenance point of view where we are. And what we didn't want to do is just bring that report to you without the broader picture. Um, so we will, we will bring that to the next uh, financing projects meeting. The museum. All three projects, so the museum, two a tower and a storage, are all well and truly in flight. The storage project, uh, we're now, but well, the roof is now on the building, and we're now um, cladding the walls. So we'll soon have a, um, a weather-tight building, which is great. It's on track, on budget, on program. So hats off to everybody involved in that, including our contractors. The <clears throat> museum, we obviously are in the concept phase of that design. And that's really exciting times and we're starting to shape up now um, with a plan to come to council on the 17th of July and show council for the first time what the guys have been working on and the early concepts of the museum. We're also in the latter stages of the experience uh, supply piece where we have shortlisted uh, a candidate and they are um, coming to Invercargill to interview with us in the next couple of weeks. Uh, again, um, because we're in a tender situation, I can't talk too much about that, but uh, yet again, another stellar um, uh, candidate, amazing repertoire of, of work, and I can't wait to bring you more news on that. And the Tuatara, today we had our second uh, concept uh, design meeting with a lot of different stakeholders up, up in Wellington, um, with experts there, and here in Invercargill with our Iwi and um, other stakeholders. Again, you know, it's starting to shape up looking really, really cool. Um, it's in early concept stage, so again, I don't really want to talk too much more about that until we bring it out to, to you a bit more formally. But another, you know, another cool piece of work, really shaping up really well. So the whole program 1225 is on track, on budget, and really, really going well. So I can't, uh, I can't say anything uh, more highly to the team. They're really cranking that one along really well. Bluff boat ramp. So we've gone through a lot of engineering. We've put our first test pile in the seabed. That's tested it well. We now have a firm understanding of what the piling method is. We've engaged through our engineers um, a contractor, and we're just waiting for a delivery date for them to deliver the three more piles that we need to install. And over the next couple of months, we'll be going out to the market with our design for our pontoons to get that price within the market. So I expect in the next probably six months or so, we'll have those pontoons actually in the water and stage one of uh, bluff boat ramp will be uh, complete. Our focus is now stage two, which is what we call the dry side facility. 
So looking at toilets, parking, that whole arrangement down there. So that's where the project team is starting to turn their focus to now, as we feel that we've got stage one um, well and truly wrapped up. Our consent is in with the Environment Southland for the West Jetty as well. Um, that's under review. So again, that one has uh, taken a little while to get off the ground, but now we're pretty happy. We're up on the plane and we're, we're, we're tipping along quite nicely on, on that project. And last on the least uh, on the list is a housing innovation. Uh, a contractor has been awarded, ABL, and they're soon to break ground in the next couple of weeks. And uh, the delivery of those houses will be well and truly underway. So hopefully, um, there's a lot of green on the, on the dashboard at the moment. There's a lot of physical activity happening, whether it's design or physical construction. <coughs> and our capital program is yeah, moving, moving well, moving well at pace. Open, open for questions now. Yeah, thanks, Lee. Tom? Lee, when you talked about the CAB project, you, you said that the report, which I think was due this month, was delayed because we had been asking for a report, I think, about what was required in a maintenance upgrade, and you said you wanted to give the broader context. Um, I know we're going to see that maybe next month, but why give us a flavour? What does a broader context mean? Um, what, it, what it's shaping up at the moment, to be honest with you, is that it is, it's not a great read. From a building maintenance point of view, it's not a great read. And I think if you read that in without the context of what the project behind that would be, which is what a refurb would look like, um, setting it out uh, for the for us for the future, you would take a, a fairly dim view of this building. So in isolation, the maintenance piece is a, is a challenge in itself. You know, many millions of dollars, and it's you know, there's a lot of red on it rather than than green and amber. So it's um, yeah, it paints a very um, it's a very dim picture, and I think if we brought that to council right now, um, it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be the best report, to be honest with you. Thank you. Thanks, Rangi. <coughs> Just following on from Tom on that subject. Now, I mean, we're at, we're at a stage where I, I can see this dragging on forever, and we're, we're going to have our staff, which are a sizable number, working in conditions where the windows rattle and blow, and the heating systems goes when it wants to, and Look, it's frustrating in the sense that we've done this floor and it's very functional. We've done the, the um, ground floor, the reception area is very functional. The, the location of this building is premium. It's north facing, you wouldn't want to shift and do a new build. From what I hear, the, the structurally, it's earthquake sound. Um, and, and when you look at the old Menzies building over there, it's getting done up into a four star hotel and money's getting invested that to reclad to rewindow and and obviously have plush rooms now i'm just struggling to understand why we can't use that same innovation to do this building up i really can't and even if it has to be done floor by floor when budget comes free i i don't know I've, it's just one i can't get my head around that we seem to be the wheels just keep spinning and we get more reports and it's too daunting and we'll, I mean, I could be here in two years and we get the same report. Well, I think the first point I'll make is that the, the initial budget didn't fit our aspirations. So that's the first point I'd like to make. Second point, we've been asked to look at it in somewhat a different way, uh, or a bit more maintenance focused. And we have that information now. And that's, like I say, in, in isolation, isn't the right report to bring to council, to be fair. And you know, you could do it floor by floor, but at the moment the budget doesn't fit the aspiration. There's bigger pub problems to unpack. It has been a bit complicated, but we want to bring the best information forward for council to make the best decision rather than just going at it. Yeah, welcome here. Thank you. Um, I thought it was just worth me adding some context to this one because as much as uh, Lee apologised for that not one not being here, um, it was probably more me asking for some further information that, that's um, prevented that report being here today. Um, one of the things we were really conscious of is, as Lee said, we've, we've got a report sitting there with a, an awful lot of, of red around the condition of the building that's really telling us that the, the building is getting very much to, um, towards the, the end of usable life before we have to start spending some really significant money on it. Um, 
we would spend a significant portion of that existing allocation of money just to tick off some of those really red items. Um, and my concern was around coming back to council saying, this is how we're going to allocate that, that money that you've got set aside. This is the couple of items it's going to tick off and then not have a picture for what then we have to do in another three years time and then another three years time after that and another three years time after that. I wanted to make sure that council very much had the picture of um, not only that first investment of money that we'd have to make, but then that next investment and next investment and next investment um, so that you're able to make a fully informed decision um, to what um, Councillor Pottinger was talking about. Is is that the right approach, Re redoing this building a bit at a time um, <coughs> or whether or not we should be be doing something different. So to that point about, about trying to give elected members all of the information that you need to make as an informed decision as possible rather than, than part of the information and then you guys having to try to um, decide what you're going to do with only part of that picture. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Barry? Yes, as far as, as far as the boat ramp goes down a bluff, this quite a few moorings around the front of that um, because I had to drive in there. There's quite a few uh, moorings in front. Have they been notified that they'll have to remove those or? Not, no is the answer to that. That's uh, not something that we have done. Yeah. Something we can definitely look into. Well, yeah. it's under the jurisdiction of the um, be about, be about Southport. Southport. Southport owned that. It controls that waterway. So. <coughs> That would be something that they because I know I've resolved. I've hooked onto the ropes before. Yeah, no, it's, it's coming it's in there. Not um, <coughs> Nobby, did you have a? Yeah, just just a brief reflection. Um, I'm pleased that we'll get a report that allows to decide on the future of where council sits in relation to this building. Um, at the beginning of this term, we were very clear with staff that we were not committing twenty eight million dollars to the upgrading of this building. And that's that's in the records for that amount. It seems that we've scaled back to 15 or 16, which is where it was about two years prior to it becoming 28. Um, but it, it'd be helpful to get the information that there because um, while Rangi says he's quite right that we should be uh, not doing this bit by bit, or we could be doing it bit by bit, we also need to consider whether our medium term future is here or whether it's somewhere else. Um, so I've got quite an open mind on that. Yeah, and it was sort of a question I was going to ask. Um, so, well, my mind, we need to do two things. We need to look at what is the, how much do we need to invest to make this building useful for the next 50 years? Yep. Or what are, what is the alternative? Why mm -hmm. do we move somewhere else and partner with someone else to build a completely new building? And the mm -hmm. dynamics of the CBD have changed in the last two or three months. Yeah, sure. We all know why that is. So... Um, I think that's what we need to be able to see is, you know, what's what's the cost of making this building, you know, usable for the next 50 years in a functional way for staff and is there opportunity to partner with somebody else in here or do we, is it better for us to look at somewhere else in the city with somebody else, if that makes sense. Yeah. So w when would we receive, or when would we be in a position to receive something like that? Um, well, Chair, the report is there. Um, I think... To expand a wee bit more on what I was talking about earlier, when we just looked at the, at the maintenance on its own, it's actually come back at such a number that yeah. it's caused us to go, holy moly. Yeah. So uh, I think that's that's part one. Part two, what we've been able, what we've decided to do for the best, for the better uh, information for council, is revisit the path, the, what we've done in the past, break it down into stages, and bring a report that should, looks at the future, looks at the maintenance. Because the money alone, just for maintenance, yeah. is is exasperating most of our budget, and yeah. that's just dealing with maintenance. Yeah. So to bring that to the table would just be the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Um, so what we're trying to, what we're doing, because the reports are all there, we're now looking to rehash and um, bring together a better report that looks at maintenance, but also looks at the past project that we looked at um, last year and uh, a year and a half ago now. At this point, so it's a bit more of a combined report. So we're just yeah. we're just bringing all the information together. But but does it look at potential partnering with someone else? No, because that's not in scope at the moment, but it may force council to give us a bit more direction and tell us what else they want us to look at, to be fair. Yeah. Okay, I've got Ellen and then Nobby. 
Is your question uh, related to this or yes, another something? No, yep. it's completely, no, it's okay, so can I go to Nobby and come here? It is? Yes. Right, okay. Sometimes they aren't. Really? Not yours, necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to elaborate on, on what you're talking about, you know, we're, we're planning an arc or a future reserve. Uh, in the scope of what you're looking at going forward, would you perhaps look at perhaps including that into a new civic building? Is that, is that a possibility? Is that, is that sort of kind of what you might come back with for us? To, no, what, what, no, I think what we'd like to come back to you with is this building, a full review of this building. So you can then decide, right, this isn't the home for us long term. These are big numbers. We don't just want to tart it up or do the maintenance piece. And, you, and I think councillors may come back to us and ask staff to look at further options. But as a supplementary to that, yeah. it would be quite a good idea for us to know exactly what the other possible may be cost-wise as well. Yeah. We decide as to what you're going to do with what you're going to do here, because mm. if we don't know what the other one's going to cost, it's very hard to make a decision. On what we're going to do here, we could definitely, you know, the, yeah. the, just uh, I mean, uh, it's only like it's only ballpark, but yep. any kind of mm. ballpark figure. Yeah, no, no yeah and, and, and to that end, I think, you know, if we went to a party and said, look, do us a design and build for this bigger space in a site in the CBD as a concept design, well, then we get an alternative around we invest in here or we go with a different you project. Money put aside for, I'm not put aside, but as a plan to do that. Mm. No, yeah. 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 Look, I'll look to incre increase the scope to look at some master planning and look at some alternative options. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't, we don't want to boil the ocean, but I do no. think we need the alternative. Just informs the decision better. Nobby. Yeah. Uh, mine was on the same same issue again of, of not just considering what we've got here and how much it will cost going forward. Um, I think when we discussed this six months ago, one of the things that we were going to wait for was to wait to see what came out of the future for local government review, mm. which as you'll be aware is embargoed until tomorrow. Mm. But I'm not breaking any confidentiality that there is some discussion around amalgamation of councils right. um, without being too specific. And so, um, you know, given that we know that our biggest neighbour, the South District Council, is also struggling for space, it would be remiss of us not to consider a combined space, even if we're not amalgamated given that we own a big chunk of land that on the current ICL block, which we, we which we have some ownership of. I mean, and so it would be helpful to have the comparison, mm. even if it's ballpark figures. I do have some tentative figures for an eight-storey building on that site and what that would cost dollars-wise, costed out by a, 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 um, a quantity surveying firm away from the Cale. So I've got a ballpark on that site. But what I'd like to know from this site is, what are we going to take to upgrade this building? How long will we need to stagger in if we don't do it all at once? And But more importantly, what's the value of this building if we on-sell it? Yeah, yeah, that is. Because that's part of the equation as well. Yeah. Tom? My question, I guess, goes in the same direction, and, and it was, and, and they're probably premature, because I, I take what Lee's saying, that, you know, you, he, he kind of brought to us the, the, the fact that we're going to get a report on this building specifically rather than the future, but inevitably it means that we are thinking about the future now. And, and, and my question was, I, I think what would be helpful, Lee, when you bring that paper that's all read, would be an understanding of, um, if we knew that we were going to build another building, let's just suppose, if there was an option of building and moving, um, how many years would it be before, I mean, could we spend, I know it doesn't mean nothing, but could we spend nothing in this building for five years yeah. if we knew at the end of it, I'm not really asking yeah. the question at the moment. I'm more just kind of, yeah. you know, giving a bit of lead into what you might hear when you, you bring it. You know, could you spend almost nothing in this for five years on the basis that you could then save that and mm. towards building a new building? Yeah, I think that's where um, this report's come back. The maintenance report has come back, you know, quite stark. There's a lot of red. I don't think we have an option of doing nothing for a long period of time. And that's complicated the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a useful life, isn't it? So you can merge the two. If you decide to move, it might be spend some money here to get three years' life out of this in a reasonable way and then move. In that time, you're also going down the second path of having a new civic building. Well, you don't decorate the back bedroom if you know you're going to move next week. So that's a <laughs> Well, you might. Yeah. Not when you're using other people's money. Okay. Um, any other questions relating to the report?
just in relation to project 1225 and lee and i have discussed this but i just want some clarity around it um, it was my understanding that the design brief for the new museum would include physically include some tuatara being present and i just want us to be clear that if that is the case or it is no longer the case yep for uh, the brief is the brief and we have uh, physical tuatara in the brief for okay. the museum um, as it stands at the moment again i don't want to predispose no, design it. and and we want to bring the experience team on board as well so i think the best best thing to do is to let those designers do their magic and let us debate that at the right time yeah and, and why i ask that chair is is it we've had some publicity recently on on that project which is really exciting is good but some of the feedback that we've had going back out to people that say well now that you're building a new tuatarium in the center of the park which is also great does that mean you're not going to have a link in the museum and the reply from the organization has been we haven't made a decision on the so that throws some confusion in with the community yeah who are quite keen to have the tuatara even if it's just a small number yeah so if i can sort of lean into that a little bit with my other head on i think at some point we need to understand the fullness of that decision and and we'll get something at some point i can't think when it's on the scope or if it is on the scope but yeah. we will need to bring something to council around the the wholeness of that discussion and decision yeah. um, about the tour tower yeah and i think just you know just to clear up some of the confusion the, the tour tower facility in the park is forward is forward looking we understand cool. through experts in wellington who have already done, done this that and, and are working on the husbandry manual which is you know the guidebook and how you how best to look after um these these uh, animals is that this is where the, the guidance is going so the tuatara enclosure in the um in the queen's park is is, is preparing us for changes we know is going to happen in the guidance of looking after um mm. these animals so we're just looking forward um to make yeah. sure that we're, we're well placed to look after those the best those animals the best way we possibly can yeah. doesn't rule out um the museum though yeah and and so is it reasonable to maybe think that you know the tuatara are absolutely a fundamental part of the queen's park experience yeah. but whether they were specifically related in the museum is to be determined mm -hmm. yeah sure yeah okay right right we've had a mover and second are there any further questions before we vote on receiving the report strategic capital projects and the dashboard now just can i say prior you know thanks very much to the project team lee i know you're doing a fantastic job and to have us where we are in a number of projects is really credit to your team so thank you thank you chair right all those in favor of accepting the two aye, aye. aye. against not carried next what we got? uh strategy uh, city streetscapes So can I have a mover and a second to receive this report? Thanks, uh, Ringy, and thanks, Tom. Okay, Russell, welcome. Thanks, councillors. Yeah. In reflecting while I was sitting down there, I perhaps thought that perhaps my report would have been perhaps better to have been titled uh, City Streets Next Stages, perhaps rather than Stage 2. Right. Um, I guess we've seen quite a bit of... Uh, continual uh, I guess change in the city centre over the last little while and really there's been lots of discussion about what's next and this report looks to try to uh, I guess prioritise that and actually focus on what the next stages that are necessary um, or potentially necessary for our city to progress and also um, partner with some of that outside investment going forward. Um, I think there are lots of opportunities, but really I've tried to write the report in a way that actually um, brings together the information we have today and we've um, discussed a number of strategic workshops. Um, I do apologise, the uh, recommendation number five up there really um, doesn't align directly with the financial implications and I'm suggesting that that perhaps isn't considered and deleted and perhaps we can have a discussion on that because that really um, probably needs to be um, undertaking in recommendation six where we'd actually establish a budget with some costs associated with what the planning would be so I think that's probably a little bit premature and my apologies that was in a draft that um, one section got changed and that didn't get deleted so 
was my suggestion. So happy to take questions. Thanks, Russell. Um, so I've got Nobby and then Rangi. Yep, thank you. Um, <coughs> just to reflect that um, when I read this paper, I, I got really confused, Russell. So just help me clarify some things. Um, I understood that in earlier workshops that we've had that we collectively agreed, well, by majority agreed, that we wouldn't proceed with uh, stages two and three, which is down Kelvin Street and this way up S Street. So that was cancelled. And we had uh, John Green here at the time, um, and that we would focus on what the place and what goes to uh, S Street West. And I'm not sure when I see report this report that says that the, the budget for Stage Street 2, which is the Kelvin Precinct, which is running between Don and Esk on Kelvin at $13.6 million, is for 25, 20, 24, 25 onwards. That wasn't my recall. Um, my recall is we politely paused it, but there was no intention to, to jump into that. And so I'd seek some clarification on that, but I do have some other questions as well. So thanks, Chair. The intention of, of the report has been to try to clarify exactly um, what me and Obby's talking about. So stage two is really, I've described it as the Calvin Street precinct, whatever that might mean when it's more fully scoped. Um, and I guess stage three is what I call S Street West, which is the other precinct. And in the absence of, I uh, guess, having a number of names, um, I've tried to say there's, there's two distinct parts and they and they are and can run independently at whatever timing council so chooses. Um, from the roadmap, my understanding was that the Calvin Street works was proposed at a later time and was paused, but the budget was actually set at that 13.6, which is the amount that we consulted the public on. Yeah, I'll go to Rangi and then Ian. Uh, Alan. Uh, thanks, Chair. <coughs> Look, um, being on that, uh, committee with John Green, um, it was all it was always our understanding that stage two was Kelvin Street and S Street East mm -hmm. as stage two, mm. and stage three was always going to be that way. Or what, what, that way, walk in the place, uh, and it, uh, S Street West. Now, I, I actually like the report, um, especially when it actually. Um, prompts us to make a decision. If you go to recommendation eight, uh, in choosing that the developer takes the lead and brings back ideas to council for us to either like, dislike, alter, I think that's that's a very good um, work, Russell, that that option is there. And I'd be quite happy to actually, oh, before I move, that we go for eight C, I'd like to say that uh, now that H and J Smiths has has done its announcement, and we still don't have any firm idea of what the south of the Kelvin Hotel is going to be, um, Kelvin Street really, uh, and around this area here. And if people now seem to not like this place anymore, um, then then uh, really that should just be put in uh, put on hold, and we just move ahead. Uh, if that budget is that budget still usable for stage three, is the one approved for stage two, is it, or has it been dipped into a wee bit? Um, my understanding is that that's a forward, but it's a forward forecasted budget, so it yeah. would need to be revisited. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'd like to actually move that uh, recommendation eight is that we go for. I think it's recommendation seven. seven, isn't it? You're talking to it. Yeah. Is it seven now? Yeah, it's up on the yeah. screen here. Oh, sorry. Fine, I'm looking at book. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. C. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Alan? I'm sorry, <coughs> Mr. Chair. Um, Alan, before you speak, I would ask um, Councillor Ludlow to share a microphone with you. We're having difficulty picking you up. Oh, of course you haven't got one. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. I didn't realise I didn't have one. You know, um, yeah, Councillor Ludlow's got two microphones in front of him, so oh. everyone shuffles Hell. down one. <laughs> Hell, you're <laughs> greedy. Very difficult. Yes. So it wasn't stereo for a minute. Some people like to hear the sound of their own voices. <laughs> Some of us do it professionally, Alan. Yes, it's a Sorry to interrupt, Alan. If you want to accelerate yourself to our level, you're welcome. I don't want to. <laughs> um, I'll just do like to say that I was actually just not as not going to say it as well as what Rangi did, but I was just going to pretty much say the same thing, actually. Very good report. And I also like, well, I was going to calling it 8C as well, but I see now it's 7C. 
And I just recollect um, a developer in that area offering to assist. Is that a, also a further option than you're thinking? They did financially assist, I yeah. believe, was the offer that was made at the time. And I thought, well, you know, if there's an option for that, surely we should. Mr. Chair, I think that's, that's obviously there's a huge interest from the developer and we should have that conversation. Yeah, so so that would be part, that that was the case when Jeff came to present. Yeah. Um, and so that would be part, I'd see that when we get the report back around, mm. if we go with this recommendation to pro prioritise stage three, which is the walk in place piece that then Russell would engage with the developer. And, and, and part of that would be their contribution to it. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Tom? I, I mean, I definitely support 7C. My, my question was about the timing, given that the new hotel is likely to be up and running at some point next year, as I understand it. There's no time to lose, basically. And, and you know, and, and that suggests to me a timeline and making this happen, which is faster than it probably would ordinarily. Mm. Um, so, uh, Russell, do you have in your mind a, a kind of project plan that would allow us to do all this stuff in good time? Mr Chair, one of the things that we learned from stage one was that we jumped on a bullet train and tore down Esk and Don Street. And I guess using the time we have between now and um, mid to late next year, where I understand that hotel is due to open, um, is actually the most vital thing. And the potential, I guess, for, for those options were that um, some of those options have a, an ability to, um, I guess, progress much faster, have perhaps different rules for procurement, but we need to make sure that we do protect um, appropriate business practice and good consultation practice through that, because I guess all of those still th things need to come back to council, because the area that we're talking about developing is public space. So, so just to get some clarity, if we go with what you've recommended here, and it is C, you would you would bring a paper back to us with, that would scope out that project in more detail, including developer contributions and a time frame, and then it would get handed through to the projects team to manage that project. Yeah, that's correct, Chair. That um, yeah. we we do need to develop that whole picture so that we actually know what what we're buying a buying into yeah. and what that what that's delivering and at what time. Because I guess those are the things that are uh, have got lots of elements in people's minds and expectations. And it may well be that our expectations to join within the um, principles of the city centre master plan don't necessarily may not necessarily always align with the developers. But it's about trying to get those in a common place in a common time. And I guess the strongest benefit in those is that you actually are linking to someone who has that, uh, I guess, that invested interest of actually meeting time, just like we had um, some of the issues we faced in Esk Street and Don Street, where we had um, big developments right on our doorstep, and how you, how you do two things in the same space is always a challenge. So. Yeah, and without you having explored it in too much detail, you, you feel it's deliverable. I think it's October next year that they're sort of looking for an opening. It's deliverable. If we I go with it. haven't thought fully for it, it, there will be elements that will be deliverable. Um, I guess some of the consultation and, and how you might make mm. um, conversations with the community and then decide on what the outcomes would be of, through what in a place may take more more time. But I think you'll be in a much, there's a potential of being in a good place by then. Yeah, great. Okay, so okay. head Leslie, then Nobby, then Tom. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I was just going to reflect if we're tending towards 7C, whether it's a better signal to slightly alter that and have it as joint council developer lead. At the moment, the implication of what's <coughs> there is almost that we'll accept whatever the developer wants. Um, and it's no comment on the partic this particular developer, but it is thinking about the future signal to developers it might just be a good idea to have the, the joint concept in yeah. there from that point. Um, and I'm happy to move two to six, which I don't think has yet been moved. No, we haven't had a move. We'll just take a couple more comments and then we'll get a move. So we had Nobby, then Evelyn, then Tom. Um, so I'm still a bit confused. I need to go back a step or three. 
Um, and D there, we're floating the option of um, uh, design, preliminary designs for stages two and three. So it's Kelvin and S Street East. Um, I'm quite clear that at the beginning of this term, we, we put both those on pause. And if we're now bringing forward S Street West as a priority, which it clearly it needs to be with the new hotel, then the obvious way to fund it is not to come back with a new budget, but it's to fund it out of the money that we've already paused. So we've paused, by my estimation, about $21 million worth under the under that 21, 20, uh, sorry, under um, under design stages two and three. So that's Kelvin and uh, Estuary East. Mm. We're about 21 million, give or take a bit of change in, in the original budgets, which is what we paused. If we leave it paused and make it a longer term thing and the long term plan to consider, that funds what we need to do in. Um, in S Street West, which is down by the new hotel, including Wachner Place, and it doesn't force us to put up an additional budget. Uh, it leaves us to come back to the original if we think it's needed further down the track. Yeah. I'm yet to be convinced that doing S Street East, which is where we currently sit, is an ideal location to develop an inner city block that encourages foot traffic when it has within it two large car parks. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And now, uh, a great big uh, store right next to us that is closed yeah. uh, or about to close. Yeah, I, I think, and I may have it wrong, but I think that was the nature of the paper, wasn't it? That we're going to put S Street West as the priority and we're going to transfer the budget, which I think is 13 million res residual, would be prioritised S Street West in doing that. And by doing that, we're pausing Calvin Street and S Street East. That's, that's the context of the paper in, in summary, isn't it? So just as a point on that chair, if you look at uh, number four above you, it says confirmed stage two, which is the Kelvin Street precinct, is planned for 24-25, so that's uh, next year, um, and 25-26 yeah. years, so that's yeah. over a two fiscal year period, and budget is required for the long-term plan design works. So, under, so what that I'm day, suggesting like is we don't, that. we don't need that. Yeah. We just park it up and leave it for a okay. while. Mr Chair, it might be that four could be reworded to actually take out the reference to stage two, but bring in the reference to 13.6 million yep. being reallocated. Yep, absolutely. But that would capture the concept that's on page 30. Yeah. Because page 30 actually refers to city street under financial yeah. implications, city street stage two is paused and the 13.6 million is allocated from 2024-25 onwards. Yep. So if four is reworded to reflect that, oh, yeah, I think okay. that's capturing what we're talking about. So Mr Chair, one of the things with um, both stages that I've referred to as two and three, we haven't necessarily got to a point in time where we can allocate a budget for each of those areas. And I think that's the, that's a key thing because the 13.6 might be enough to share across both um, and therefore you could time it. But I think part of that first piece has to recognise that the piece of work that was planned for the Calvin Street precinct can be I guess paused and but the but the allocation that was that was consulted with the with the public will need to be um, reconsulted as we understand better what stage three will be required for for S Street West. Yeah. Yeah, so so in essence we're 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 just holding the money, looking to transfer it across and that would be part of consultation. And we're pausing the the Calvin Street and East Street thing. So I think, you know, we can probably, in terms of the um, motions, we just amend three and include the 13 millions reallocated there and we scrap four. So we agree that West, East Street West is the priority and needs yeah. to be advanced in line with adjacent timelines and yeah. prioritise the 13 million that's allocated within the long-term plan, and then fours. Well, I think I think the long-term plan had more than that, from my recollection. I think we did Don and S together, and then the next job was to do Kelvin and S Street yeah. East. And from my recollection, the, the costing was somewhere around the 19, 20, 21 mark for those two pieces of work. So if we're pausing and we have a significant chunk of work there, I think the other thing would be helpful is if we want to talk about S Street West, we should just call it Walkner Place. 
because it's getting really confusing about yeah, people about that's fair. different projects within Air Street. We've now got three of them. Yeah. Um, so, so let's take that recommendation around what to place, yeah. and maybe we just leave that budget number out of it, knowing that we're going to have to come back to reallocate it and consult on it. Yeah. So, so, Mr. Mr. Chair, Chair, I think yeah. item um, recommendation five identifies that we need to return with a budget for stage three, and, and it, it suggests that the, the timing the time. timings for works for stage two can be reallocated. Yeah. Do you want to add something? No, I was going to suggest the change to recommendation four there. I think the easiest way to resolve it is to put the words at the end of that as is paused. Because that means it's not deleted, it's not yeah. revoked, you can come yeah. back to it, but it's on hold. It's yeah. a clear signal that it's on hold, yeah. which then allows what Mr. Pearson has just suggested as the reallocation of the budget. Yeah. But you can still come back to it in some time because it has been consulted on as part of the long term plan work. Okay, so yeah. do we need to move it or amend that, or can we just do it under? No, I think uh, we're probably getting to the stage of needing to do um, each of those resolutions. Um, individually yeah. just to ensure that everybody is on board with each of them and we've still got five speakers to go yeah 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 so we'll get through the speakers so we've got Evelyn, Tom, Leslie, Ring and then Darren. Yeah, kia ora, Mr Chair, um, Russell in part has really covered over what I was going to say I think welcome to place alteration is a significant change to what we have consulted the public on and I would be really uncomfortable. It's not just a matter of transferring money from one place to the other. This has actually got more implications than yeah. that. And I don't think that we can just sort of say, well, we don't need to consult them because we've got the money. I think it's the changes that it's going to make to the dynamics of that area of the town really need to be considered and people need to have a chance to um, exercise their, their voices about. So, um, yeah. I, I'm not saying that Russell uh, or nobody has thought about it, but Russell did refer to it while I was waiting. So democracy in that perspective, we have consulted on this area, we have not consulted on that. Yeah, yeah. and no, I think no one I've heard suggests that we don't consult. I just wanted to make sure mm, that no, we it, Accepting Evelyn's point about democracy. I mean, it's inconceivable that we could arrive at a point where the new Distinction Hotel was opening and that's a building site. Yeah. Because you can't have people coming to the Distinction and having to walk across a building yeah, site to get up to town. So it's good to be done. So I'd, I think we, we, we have to set that stake in the ground that the work will be complete, or at least you know most of the work, footpaths and so forth, would be complete by whatever it is, October next year. Um, and then work back for that and say, well, in what order do we need to do things? Because... Again, I'm just repeating myself, but you simply can't have people coming out of the hotel and it's a building site. Yeah. Um, but I mean, obviously, except what Evelyn has just said. Yeah, yeah, we do. Need to. And sorry, the other thing I was going to say is I, I think we should change C to, um, as Leslie suggested, to say um, a developer slash council led or council slash developer. It's, again, it's inconceivable. You just let like, a developer do what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to take it? Russell, did you have a comment yet? Um, Mr. Chair, I think under the significance policy, we indicate that the change that we're proposing through this report actually requires us to actually go to consultation because the yeah. significance policy will be, will be enacted so yeah which would, which would confirm Evelyn's yeah. position okay Leslie uh, thanks mr. chair I was I was just going to comment further about um, rewording four slightly and I don't think we're quite there yet Michael because just adding is paused leaves it perhaps a little bit clumsy. Starting at stage two. I'm wondering if it, could, if, if it would be re clearer as to what we're intending to say confirms that stage two Calvin Precinct, which was planned for 2024-25, and then is paused. Yeah. I think that yeah, probably conveys. Yeah, agree. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, cheers. Bring it. Look, I mean, if you read the report, it says quite clearly in three, which describes as the backstory for developer lead, you do not need council slash developer. You don't. The, the fine print says it all that talks about consultation, it talks about uh, submitting plans for council for approval, 
uh, clear guidance would be needed on council expectations. That, well, M Michael, you might need to correct me here, but I believe that statement and the report comes with if we if we choose that. That is all part of it. Um, so I don't think we need to add any words. We're just getting too wordy. And uh, I think we stick the way Russell wrote it. Mm. That's absolutely, because it's all in the fine print and that's what it says. Why do you have to keep writing in extra stuff? Yeah, I, I think probably what this does, um, it reflects the intent with which the council lawyers want to go forward on it. We want it to be a joint led project. And I, I think Leslie um, raises a good point around precedent. If we just have something that says they're a developer led and then we get someone else come along and all of a sudden they start holding us to account around, so you, well, how come you let them lead the project and you're not letting us? So I think for consistency, and for intent in terms of what this council wants to do. We want this to be a jointly led. And I mean, Jeff came here and sat here and indicated very strongly that he wants to work alongside with us. And so this is just reflecting that by putting that in there. So I think that's reasonable. It already says that in that statement. Yeah, so just changing the wording just re reflects it in the motion. No, I think it wording. changes the whole idea. I really well, do. Sorry. I, I, I don't feel that way. Nobby? Oh, sorry, Darren. Darren. Sorry to mix the two up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not as sorry as the mayor is. But <laughs> um, I just wondered whether or not the significance policy, which obviously would be triggered, is covered off by the fact that we've actually already done a reasonable degree of consultation about the future of walking a place in the past. That's as an aside. Um, my question was really for Russell on the scoping report that comes back. Is that likely to include, along with Esk Street West and, and Wachner Place, the um, D Street connection between Esk and Don that was being talked about? Mr Chair, I don't, initially it wasn't intended to, but I think that to address some of the, uh, I guess, the um, Renewal improvements that might be necessary in those sections as in footpath renewals rather than the structural change to the environment would be part of a renewals program rather than necessarily and acknowledging that that's a section of footpath that needs some love sometime in the yeah. near future. So I think that's, that's all John referred to is just that um, light level linking between the two streets. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Alan and then Nobby. Oh, no, I just uh, was agreeing with, with Rangi to a point. I, I think it was uh, not necessarily to the council developed there because it's already explained over. But I also think that we need to be mindful that that particular developer who did offer us money has walked away from us before because of um, bad feelings, or mm. bad, um, a, bad, a bad working relationship. So I think, you know, it wouldn't be a silly idea to send the signal that. Um, we're probably quite happy to lead him. He's obviously plainly obviously going to do it with council because you can't just go developing. And I don't think it sets a precedent because every 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 action is taken on its merit, or every every possible future development is taken on its merit at the time. Yeah. 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 For me, I, I'll stay away from this council developer lead issue, but just to reflect that um, where we have had um, the group that Rangi was involved with, with John Green. And where we've had ICL involved, things have been delivered on time and pretty well on budget. And don't take this the wrong way, Russell. But where we've had stuff that we've led, we haven't been on time and we haven't been on budget. And um, I think it's important to do these joint ventures with people. Um, he's got an incentive to make sure that what in place is okay for his hotel. We have that as well. But we have the other need that uh, with potential bus access through that what in place, that's going to be controversial for some people in the public. We need to get out and consult on that very early on and make sure that we can deliver on time because as Russell said, the time frames are eye-wateringly tight on this, but we can't afford to have a new hotel open while we still got a construction site sitting out there. No, uh, Jeff has made an offer. He said to me he'd be prepared to put money into the development of Watner Place. Uh, and by that, he didn't mean the bus lane going through. He was talking more about the recreational stuff that would sit there and those tentative plans that he gave us which is a bit more on the Tuatara um, Lodge side of Walkner Place, which I thought was really positive. Yeah. Uh, okay, good discussion. Right, so we have... Oh, it doesn't move down. No, it doesn't. Um, a number of motions there. Um, so can we have...
a mover and a seconder for those motions with C being the preferred option in seven that we're moving. I'll, I'll move them one at a time as um, okay. as okay. tomorrow suggested. Yep. So do you wanna you wanna move the first one seconder? Well I was going to move them and then suggest they be taken individually. Okay, so, okay. so you can have a mover in the sector, second of Mr. Chair, and then each resolution is put one at a time to vote. Right, okay, yeah. right. So, mover and a seconder for the overall. So, Leslie and Tom, thank you. Okay, now we'll go through each of them. So, the first one, a vote. If you want to do that, yeah. so, um, just Yeah, all those in favour of one? <coughs> Aye. We're done, Aye. Against? Aye. Okay, two. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. All those in favour of three? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Against? All those in favour of four? Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. Uh, all those in favour of five? Aye. Aye. Against? All those in favour of six? Aye. Aye. Against? Carried. And all those in favour of seven C? Aye. Aye. Four. Against? Carried. Well done. Good work, Russ. So get on with it. Right. Um, financial update. Patricia, you're going to stay here and do this? I'm going to stay here for this one and do it. Okay, so can I have a mover in a second to receive this report, please? Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Leslie. Right. So this, um, good afternoon, councillors. This is the... Uh, regular reporting that we would give on the financials uh, for this I've covered off both the true we covered off both the Treasury position as at the 31st of May um, as well as the debt position at the end of April and it gives the sensitive expenditure reporting and some expense variance analysis there's a couple of points that I do want to note in relation to Treasury we are currently still got that small Treasury breach, um, which we've been monitoring for a number of months, and there is now an action in place to um, take out some forward starting swaps as the market is starting to turn there. Other than that, our net debt position is sitting at 58 million. In terms of sensitive expenditure, that listing <coughs> for the Mayor, Councillors, and Chief Executive is um, outlined there and the other one that I wanted to just note for councillors when I get to it in relation to our rates debt it is coming down significantly um, now that we've started to see because of the regular reporting that we've been doing to you we can see that it does fluctuate in a pattern and through the next financial year you'll start to see that as a graph because um, there is a trend starting to appear that we can see And the other point which our colleagues over at Southland District raised a couple of weeks ago with the timing of the uh, committees is slightly out. We are also seeing a significant increase in dishonours on our direct debits for rates. And that's to do with bank processing changes. So now that they've gone to the seven day processing, a number of our um, rate payers do not have enough money in their bank accounts when the direct debit is processed by the bank. Um, we actually saw it ahead of many of the councils around the country um, in relation to one bank being Westpac. But the other thing that you do need to be aware, and with, there's been a little bit of noise from customers about it, at present a bank cannot provide us with the transactions from Saturday and Sunday until Tuesday which means if a customer was to ring up knowing that they have paid on Saturday or Sunday, we cannot get it against their accounts till Tuesday at the earliest. That is an issue with our bank and they are busy trying to work out how they can change their reporting so we can suck that feed into our system. So just a question on that through you, Chair. Patricia, does, does that mean there is the potential for the debt to still be showing as outstanding for that Monday, even yes. though it's not. Yeah. That is frustrating. So it has happened where a number of customers, and that's why we went, 
and then we've been working with our bank to try and with it's the BNZ to try and get it so that we can get the transactions on a more timely basis. Thank you for naming it. Okay, any questions with regard to the report? I have one. Um, Tom and then Nobby. Yeah. Uh, it's me first. Um, on the uh, cover breach that we have, is that an internal policy breach or is that a... It's an internal policy. It's an internal policy, but not in breach of any lending requirements no. or anything of that sort. It's a, it's a just our internal policy that we need to have so much fixed debt at a t fixed interest mm. at a certain point in time, and we've got... But, you know, but am I right in thinking then that the, the point that you're making is that because of that breach, if we go to borrow more money, then that would be taken into account and we might end up paying higher interest no. rate, is that? No. No. This is simply our own Treasury management policy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The, yeah, the mix of air funding, floating versus fixed, was sitting slightly out there, outside there. Okay. Okay. Um, who do we have? Uh, Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, Patricia, just in the area of other investments, or cash and cash investments, um, compared to this time last year, that 18 million was about 40 something million. Uh, so I guess uh, it seems to me that the Funds that were traditionally sitting in the bank have gone across to Avocable Central by way of loans? No. No? We've borrowed for the money over to Invercargill Central. The money that would traditionally been in the bank has gone into capital projects. So we've spent what that higher level that we've had in the bank on our own spending. So the city streets, Tisbury, and those, so we haven't specifically gone out and borrowed for them. Okay, thank you. So, so just for that's just around phasing cash versus debt, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Leslie. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to ask Patricia whether we've started to see a trend of more ratepayers entering into payment plan arrangements. Yes, we have got. So we are getting more people contacting us as they um, get into have recognised that they have got into difficulties, they contact us, we will put a payment plan in place. Many of them hold mortgages, so we can recover via the mortgage as, as an option, but our preference is a payment plan. And that's definitely gone up considerably in the last uh, year? There's more. I wouldn't have said it's a considerable increase, but there is a, a noticeable more coming through. Certainly more that we are collecting on mortgage than in the past. Thank you. That's the cycle, isn't it? Okay, any further questions? Uh, just a comment, you know, and I know we've pushed you a little bit with this, Patricia, but thank you for the detail you've got in that report. I think it gives us a good sense around, you know, expenditure and those sorts of things. So I appreciate the effort there. Um, right, so uh, mover and seconder for the Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Barry. Um, so we're receiving the financial update and recommend that um, we note the ex, uh, sensitive expenditure for the period 1 January 23 to 30th of April. So all those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Thank you. Right, Invercargill Central Outcomes Report. This is oh, Andrew. Welcome. Afternoon. Uh, look, I think this is a fairly simple report, but I just think it's really good practice. I mean, Council considered a lot of factors when it invested in Invercargill Central Limited. And one of those factors was a report from NZIAR around the potential broader benefits to Southland and, and Invercargill and Southland more broadly from the investment. And that was one of the key factors that Council took into consideration when determining whether or not it should step into what is effectively a commercial space. And so I just think it's important that Council got a report back to say, were those outcomes realised? Uh, how did it transpire as to why you invested and did you get those outcomes? And look, it would also be potentially good practice to do this again in a number of years, but the building is complete uh, and it's appropriate that you receive this report at this time and consider that and reflect on the reasons for investing. Thank you. Questions?
Novi. Uh, Andrew, just a couple of questions that I guess the public sometimes ask me, um, which is not the detail of the level of detail you've got in these reports, which is great. Um, I guess it's, it's two things. One, the money we've invested, the return. I think you've signaled that before. So that's just a lay a lay term, but we we've, acknowledge We've always that. said, and, and in reports later on, we'll see that it's 10 years before yeah. the equity investment would be expected yeah. to see any sort of return on that money. That, and, but that's not to say that there's not a return to the community. Sure. Oh, I don't refute that. Yeah. And the other issue is I uh, constantly get asked about what's the occupancy like? Uh, in ballpark figures, we still got some space. Look, there is some, still some space, and I think, I mean, again, without going to a great level of detail, and sure. I don't think it's commercially sensitive because it's quite obvious. The the real difficulty we have at the moment is the first floor, yeah. um, and, and it's interesting you ask me that question because it's continually changing, um, and I could there's changes literally since we've been sitting in this room as to occupancy, which is yeah. obviously filling up those spaces, but uh, the real problem we have is the first floor. But I think the retail space on the ground floor, I think you can okay. say is now yep. pretty much 100%. Yep. And, and just a, a last question on that, Chair. Um, can you give us any update on what's happening with the what people refer to as the big space that sits behind the bank building, hmm. which was to be, a, I think, a medical centre at one stage? Uh, there's still ongoing discussions, but none of them are progressing anywhere in a hurry, it's fair to say. Um, there was two spaces there. There was always what was ideally put in the original plans as a piazza sort of concept over the top. And and in fairness, that, that piece of work uh, really requires a solution for the pieces of land around it because that will be used to tie them together. So if the medical centre goes ahead, then that will trigger some further piece of work or, or if a site goes on the piece of land next to the bank building, then that will trigger different work. But at the moment, it's a bit of a chicken and egg scenario um, with which, which comes first. Thank you. Okay. Just um, one, just with respect to the report. Um, it, it doesn't say how many people were employed within that ICL in terms of all the shops and bits and pieces currently employed. Yeah, not just by ICL, but you know all the people that work in retail yeah, no, in their no, precinct. And, and, and I note yeah. that they say they, you know, they can't. They haven't done the what if around. If we hadn't have done it, what would have happened? But in my mind, I think that would be quite material. The difference in terms of social good and benefit and even employment, where because we've done this, there's a number of businesses that have stayed and there's a number of people employed, and that's a real social benefit. But the report just didn't sort of try and even dig that out, which oh, is a shame. So are you, just to clarify, are you talking people employed in the centre itself, or yeah. are you talking, yeah, and I I can't give you that number off the top of my head, I have asked for it, and I yeah. do know what it is, and it was uh, was in the original modelling, I can get it back to you for the next meeting, but it was yeah, a, no. slightly under what we, were, what we were hoping, but not significantly, I think it was about 75% of what the forecast yeah. was in the original modelling. Yeah. Um, so, but it was good to see also that it's called out, you know, the, the positive impact that people have had from, you know, the emotional pride they feel in the city. It's wonderful to see that reported. Yeah, so that's good. The only other question I had before I go to Barry was just with your report, you talk about risk. Um, and I note in our last um, audit and risk, we talked through, you know, us not drilling into risk enough and yet. We haven't called out any specific risks other than remain a number of financial risks. And I think in these reports, we need to see those risks put there so that when we go through Q and, um, you know, whatever, quality um, assurance that we've actually had it reported through to these committees, what those specific risks are. I think that's too general on the back of that feedback we got from audit and risk. If, was, if this didn't have some other reports in public excluded, I would have been a bit more expansive. Yeah, well, even if you put the, these are covered in mm. other papers that have been presented to the committee, I think, you know, we, we said about yep. that in yep. audit and risk and we need to then behave in the way that we yep. agreed to, which was just identify risk more clearly within our papers. Righto, Barry. Yeah, in, in relation to the parking building up top, um, is there a reason why, I've heard it, heard it from uh, quite a few of the retailers, that they're a bit annoyed that the uh, time 
free time up in the car park has been re reduced by quite a significant, significant amount. Uh, so there was a change, a quarter of an hour or something. A change Actually. from uh, an hour free to half an hour free. Yeah. Um, and to put it bluntly, uh, the, the car park uh, was always built as a revenue for the, the development. I mean, a significant portion of the cost is in that car park. And so it's to make sure that it gives us the return it needs is the simple answer. Yeah, yeah it's a revenue mm. decision. Darren? And at the same time, the price for permanent park has went down. Yeah, Leslie? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to follow up on Barry's comment, um, I just wanted to feed back that the disabilities community at our recent consultation on the long-term plan had commented on that particular issue because for them, it takes extra time once they have parked mm, yeah. and they are finding the half hour um, very short. So I, I did say I would feed that issue back that it actually creates a difficulty for disabled parking in, the, in that car park. And, uh, just in response to that, sorry, I think there was a number of issues that came up as part of that consultation and I've fed those back through to management uh, of the Senate to have a look at and consider. So I'll come back and let you know the answer. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. That's a consideration we need to take, isn't it, Nobby? Just a quick reflection on what Lucy just said as well. I guess, uh, I guess going forward, you, you'd want to ask the question: If we are we required to provide disability parking, or are we provide are we there to provide longer time for them to shop or get out and shop? Um, and if that if it's the latter. Then we should have some designated areas that are exclusive for that. They might still have an hour long free as opposed to half an hour free. Yes, that, that could be another option to consider so instead of doing the whole car park. We would have to provide designated disability parking within the thing, and that's provided, isn't it? But yes, it's how you manage the time difference. Mm -hmm. You have to do that through the pay and system. It, and, and it's that balancing act that we'll get all yeah. the way through this, where there's yeah. community expectations and councils just an investor in a commercial enterprise. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as I said, I've fed them back, and I'll make sure that the, the consideration of those things does come back to council, because we've got a duty as the investor to understand that and have some input into those decisions. Yeah, that's yeah, no, a good call. OK, so. Um, can we have a mover and second? Yes, can we have a mover and second to receive Darren and Leslie? Thank you. So we're receiving the report from the Cocal Centre Outcomes, noting the qualitative and quantitative benefits set out in the NZIER report for the CBD regenerating revisiting 29 estimates and confirm the community wellbeing outcomes can then to outweigh the risk of investment. So, Leslie? Thanks, Mr Chair. Look, as the seconder, I just think it's worth um, emphasising the interesting reading in the New Zealand Institute report on exactly those things that we aim for in taking the decision to invest in this project, um, particularly the role of council as a catalyst and the references in the report to the fact that without council's willingness to um, to invest as in a joint venture, that this would not have happened. Um, and I think it's also important at this point to reflect, I think all of us have had extremely good feedback from the public on the difference that the complex and the associated works, such as the streetscape works and the involvement of um, mana whenua in the, um, in the design of the these street spaces, etc. I think we've all had very good feedback on that, and I think it's a good time to acknowledge that, in fact, this has been um, an investment that, as it says, where the community wellbeing still does very much outweigh the risks. Yeah, thank uh, you. It's noted. Thank you. Okay, so we've got to move in a mover and second. All those in favour of the three motions? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Okay, um, so. Late open, uh, late open, late item. Um, the approach to naming of the museum. So the paper. Excuse me, Chair. I have to leave. Your excuses. Thank you for your efforts and energy. Um, right, Steve. Welcome. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, councillors. Um, so this is a an approach paper that just sets out how we're proposing to name our new museum. 
and I'll take the paper as read. I think the real key importance for us is to make sure that the name reflects um, something that recognises the importance of this place to our community and something that you've heard of a lot from the community over many years. That it also talks to the nature of its design and also its prominence as, as a future icon facility for our city. So the approach sets out how council is the overall determiner of the name, but how we partner with Mana Whenua to, um, to get a name that reflects, uh, I guess, uh, the journey that both cultures have been through. And so this paper sets it out and happy for any questions. Thanks, Steve. Questions, uh, Evelyn. So um, the first thing is that the paper recommends asking the EWI Liaison Committee um, as part of this process. The EWI Liaison Committee is the advisor and support to the SMAG Trust Board, not to the museum as such, not to the Cargill City Council. So I'm not sure why that was the avenue that was chosen. Um, I would have thought that at the very least, it would be through the Runaka, either through the two that are part of the Invercargill City area, which is Awarua and Waihopai, or through the four. But the other thing that happened is that this, a part of this discussion was set out to the Ewe Liaison Board members. And the first thing, I hadn't even hardly read it, when somebody rang up and said, why are we being asked again? Yeah. We have already told you, the Ewe Liaison Committee two years ago offered the name. The Ewe Liaison Committee confirmed the name about six months ago. I think you're building up within it my community a little bit of antipathy about the process. So leaving that aside, I do not think Iwi Liaison Committee is the correct venue, the avenue for this. This is a Runaka issue. Um, we'll leave aside that the fact that Runaka has already offered a name, but we did not impose a name. We were asked to provide a name. We gave a name that had meaning. We gave the story behind the meaning. I am a little bit unsure what more can be reasonably expected of us. Because apart from going to something that does not speak to us as part of a story, so therefore just a technical thing where you pick up a dictionary and you look up the three words or whatever it is and you say, we'll put those together and that's what the Māori name will be, which is not the option that most places choose these days, but I do feel quite strongly that this is getting to the point of being actually offensive. We are, were asked, we provided, I don't actually understand why we are revisiting this yet again. So, so just to clarify, so the, um, the committee that represents Iwi in the in SMAG yep. gave the name it was two years ago yeah. 2021 but yeah. but then you're saying that's not the right place to now receive the name from our empowering legislation oh no that's not the right word we have a different board now that manages the Southland Museum and Art Gallery Taonga yeah and that is what the Iwi Liaison Committee is attached to. It is not attached to the operational activities of the museum. When it first existed, the two things were combined together. So, so has the makeup of that board substantively changed from two years ago? The people on the board have half have changed. Half have changed. Yeah. However, the board itself revisited this approximately six months ago when it was raised um, shortly, perhaps after the election, not quite sure, sometime around about then. I would have to actually go back and look at my minutes, but I believe it's sometime around about then. <laughs> and so they, at that time, they were still operating under the same board structure and they confirmed the name 
but they also talked to their representative Runaka before they did that. So it's so, really the Runaka have confirmed. So yeah, so if if the name that was given is adopted, the Runanga would be happy with that in your view. It's to Unua, that is what we all agreed on. Um, and we and, you, and whatever else council wants to put with that is not our issue. What what we're saying is that that is the name that we offered. It has a meaning. It has a story behind it, and we're not quite sure by that part of it is being revisited. I think so. Future questions. Um, oh, so okay. Steve and then Barney and then Tom. Yeah. Look. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> One of the reasons, and, and I appreciate that the governance has changed with the, the Collections Trust, um, but one of the reasons that we're proposing this route um, to seek the feedback on the name is that uh, of all structures, that, that the Iwi Liaison Committee is, is really close to the service and to the history of this place. But the one thing that um, I guess none of us have seen yet is the actual design of the facility. And if you recall, I think the name Niho o Te Tanifa actually is reflective of the design of the facility. And so what we want to do through this process is to share the design with the committee to actually give the committee a chance to, to reflect on the design and, and what it's looking like to go, well, actually, this is still the appropriate name and that would be appropriate feedback. But it also gives the committee a chance to go, actually, uh, there's something else in the feeling of this place now. Mm. And so that's what we want to do through this process. It's not to uh, disregard the feedback, but it's to provide a, a current view to that committee to say, does this name still stand or is there something else? And that's the feedback that council is seeking. Um, so I just wanted to clarify the reason as to why uh, yeah. approaching that. Why? Yeah, that's well summarised. Thanks, Steve. Um, Pania. Uh, I just want to share that I had noted this last night at our, our Runaka meeting, and it was written, it was within my report, that this has been raised three times at this table, or questioned in some way or form. And um, I just want to note that there was a bit of disappointment around that, given that the name was skipped in good faith in June 2021, and it was well thought out. And I, I think there's just this, well, why is it being questioned? Mm. Sorry, I just want to just leave it there. Mm. But, but given what Steve's explained around yes, further I mean, down the path, was, we've got design, we want to share the design. And absolutely. So, yeah, there's an alternative view that says that we're actually trying to partner in a really meaningful way here because we've got something that physically you can see now and, and if you come back and say hey this name still fits then that's that's fantastic but equally I think it'd be offensive as the word's been used if we just bowled on and then someone said actually it didn't fit you know we, we're not the experts so we're looking to seek that out so I think that's the intent you need to take on with this paper Tom Oh, look, I, what I was going to say is that there needs to be a mutual agreement on the names. Yeah. Mutual implies two parties, but there's actually more than two. But I mean, I think we, I think we need to arrive at a name that all of us can get behind, and whether that's Te Anua or some other name, then you know it remains to be seen. But it's much better if it's mutually arrived at, mutually agreed. Yeah. And you know, and I think what this paper says it's a bit wordy actually, the paper, but you could probably do it in a paragraph. I mean, what this paper I think says is that we. Um, you know, we need a process by which we can arrive at that. Yeah. And and I think what's been suggested in terms of, you know, who we should be speaking to in terms of the our EB partners, um, you, you know, I think Evelyn has said, well, that's probably not correct, actually, so we need advice on that. But, yeah. but I mean, it's I, I find it hard to find a problem in my mind with the idea that we should have a, a name that we can, all, we can all agree on, yeah. a mutual name. Yeah, and that's the intent. Yep. Nobby? <coughs> Um, yeah, I think it's a wider issue than that's what's been narrowed down. So, I guess I've heard both the EWI delegates talk about the TRIO interpretation, but it's wider than that because one of the things that we need to consider is whether we call it South Museum as the first part, or whether we call it Murahiku. Now, I prefer to have the Murahiku person himself, and I've been quite public about that, but I can't uh, align with that name unless I have EWI blessing because 
Mirahiku means more than just Southland mm. as our territorial area. It goes beyond that. Those boundaries go beyond. Yeah, that's right. So I want to make sure that in that discussion, yeah. which goes back to Iwi, that we're not just saying, well, you know, what do you want the Te Reo interpretation to be? It's actually, are you okay if we were to name it Mirahiku? Mm. Or if you're not, then we go back to the South one, which was initially our starting position. So it's both. The other, the other thing I think, which Tom referred to, and you have as well, Chair, is the issue of design. And when I go back and look at the museum that's still sitting there, um, the terrier below it talks about a whale's tooth. And because when you sit back down in Kelvin Street or whatever it is, or further down, Devon Street, it looks a little bit like a whale's tooth and it has some relevance. And when they see the new design, I guess I'd like to know that Iwi have some um, belief that the name that they've already given to us is still appropriate for the design of the building because it will, will be quite inspirational. Yeah. And if it is, that's great. And if it's not, then they give us another name. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Okay, so I've got Trish, then Leslie, then Alan. Um, thanks very much. I think that the, the discussion here has been really useful. I see that going back to Iwi is respecting hmm. them because when it was gifted to us, it was a museum and art gallery and it was a pyramid, it was a different place. So what we're saying is, um, now we've got this different look, it's a different, we're in a different spot, it's just a museum. Is this still, exactly what Nobby said, is this still relevant, or are there other um, names that you would consider? So what I, I really believe that um, what's proposed is that we actually are respecting the iwi by giving them the opportunity to say, yes, this still fits, or no. Thanks, Trish. Thank you. Leslie. Thanks, Mr Chair. Um, I just wanted to comment on the fact that it's my understanding that the Iwi Liaison Committee is appointed by the Runaka. And in yeah. this case, it would seem to me that it might clear up at least a little bit of the confusion if it's clear that we go back to the source, the Runaka, rather yeah. than the intermediary, the Iwi Liaison Committee, yeah. which, as Evelyn has pointed out, now actually has a different relationship from what Evelyn and Pani have pointed out, actually has a different relationship. So it would seem even more important to go back to the parent Runaka. It then becomes a question of whether it's the two or the four, and Evelyn and Pania may have a definite view on that, um, and indeed some councillors may have a view that it, that it should be the four or the two, but it would seem to me that that might clear up some of the confusion if it is the actual runaka who asked the question. Mm. The EWI Liaison Committee members would be no doubt involved as part of their runakas in that particular issue and would certainly feed in that they had offered the original name, etc. But it just seems to me it would be much clearer if, if it was clear that it's the runaka we're asking at this point. And as Trish says, that's respecting our runaka um, and the seniority of the, the runaka who have appointed the committee. Yeah. So, so in effect, what we're saying is, points three and four in the paper on page eighty-four of board box, we would we pull out and put it on the motion here and amend that to instead of saying the iwi liaison, we would actually name yeah. the runanga. Yes. And then, that and would then be that would be the consultation process. Is that you, Steve? Do you want to comment on that? Yeah, I'd like to comment on that. Um, look, I think that's a, a suitable approach in terms of whether it's two or four, I think the best approach would be to ask the four runaka because we have a regional story to be told and certainly the scope of our storytelling is a story of Southland. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that that would, and that's the scope of the committee and I think that as a starter would be the, oh, I guess my recommendation. So that's Hokanui and then Araka to the, um Former Haku Papata Burunaka. Mm. Yes. Uh, I, if I'm going to be the proposer of the yeah. amendment, I'd be very happy that's the way it's referred to. Okay. Yeah, cool. Right, we've got uh, Ellen and then Darren. <coughs> Where are you, Ellen? Um, yeah, I'm just a wee bit confused because I thought we actually already had a name. 
Um, it was Tanoa. I thought we that was the name of it. So I'm yeah. just wondering why are we revisiting this again? It's just a little bit confusing to me because we had a name. Now whether we call it Tanoa South and Museum or whatever, that, no. that that's okay. But why are we revisiting something that's sort of already been done? I'm just a little bit unsure. Sorry, Steve. Yeah, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Look, um, I think that the mayor actually provided an answer to the councillor's question: is that we actually haven't resolved the full name. Uh, we don't know if it's the Southland Museum, the Museum of Southland, uh, Murahiki Museum, Museum of Murahiki, and actually that's the part of the feedback process. We're not just after the Tereo interpretation and the confirmation. We're actually after the feedback on the full name. Yeah which includes English and Māori. Yeah. And so I think that's, for me, that's the sort of feedback that we're looking at. But And we also are doing this with the support of a hopefully a very early concept design that we can share with those people engaged in that so that they can see and sense the facility as it is starting to come out from on the paper. Yeah. And also, I think we've increased the scope of who we're consulting because Hokanui and Aparima were not part of the original group. Is that correct? Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Okay, they were. No, so we're not. Okay. So we're cool. going back to. So why are we making a mountain out of a molehill? Well, I don't. I don't think we are. I think we're following good process around. We have to have a, a decision made together with um, the, you know, the council and and iwi, and we're. We've got a slightly changed playing field because we actually have got design. We will show design to them, and we want to make sure that the, the naming process aligns with the design. And, um, and and they've got the opportunity to confirm if they want to stay with the name, then so be it. We're not saying they can't, and we're not saying we don't like it. We're just saying we want to check back, and I think it's a good process. Um, Darren. I'll be careful here because there's, there's a fair degree of misinterpretation or misunderstanding that's going around in, in, in many senses. Largely, I'm, I'm comfortable with the process in that it's a going back to clarify that given the new design, Tenua is still an appropriate name um, for the Tereo portion of it. Uh, and that there's consultation around the use of South and Marihiku, I see that as, as useful. Um, but the Tianua side, if that stays, I think we just need to be clear on how gifting works. Um, because if I had a birthday last week, if somebody gave me a shirt, I don't go, yeah, it's a nice shirt, but I don't like it. Could I swap it for another one? It's not really a relationship process like that. Um, but if the Runaka are comfortable with Tianua still being relevant and are given the chance for some input mm. around um, uh, Southland slash Murahiku. I guess there's just been a little bit of misunderstanding around process with uh, Runaka and Iwi Liaison Committee. So yeah, well, it's not certainly not the former; it's the latter. Yeah, yeah. Mike, do you want to jump in? Yeah, thank you through your chair. Um, I just want to step us back in time a little bit. Um, sorry, new councillors, but um, in relation to when we got the naming, it was at the time gifted and associated to a working title for the museum. And the reason it was a working um, um, title was the principle that we hadn't got the finalisation of the design at that point. Mm -hmm. I think it's on, only um, respectful that once we get to this design phase and we're in the position that we now understand what the design's starting to look look like, that we do circle back to say, um, back to the uh, Runaka, are you still comfortable with that working, uh, to make that working title actually the correct name now going forward? Or do you want to actually make a change now you've seen the initial designs? I think that's the stage we're at and that's um, a cycle through the process. I, th I think it's been lost at the time when it was originally discussed right, right way back um, about that process in relation to the design. But I'm, I'm sure that the Runaka would not like a, um, a name that does not reflect the the output of the museum. So we need to be courteous and give them that opportunity. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we've got Evelyn, then Barry, and then Alan. Um, so just to clarify, in this <coughs> in this particular paper, we are not being asked to feedback on the issue of Southland or Mirihiku 
or Museum of Southland or Museum of Manihiku. If that's how you would like to amend it, I'm not in the position to move or second anything because I'm here as a participant, not as a member of this, this right. committee. Yeah. But then I would suggest that you add that to the consultation document because I think otherwise you're going to be consulting twice on something. So mm. if you want to provide four alternative names and say which one do we prefer and specifically do we wish to use the word mirihiku, which as um, Kuramatua pointed out, means up to the Waitaki, and which is not within the design brief or the normal scope of what we would consider to be the story of Southland. So I think you need to be quite intentional about that. But we, I didn't comment on that because I did not believe that that was what we were being asked to comment on by this paper. I think if you want to include those issues, then that is quite a good idea because that means that we, we deal mm. with everything all at once. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Barry. Yeah, it's a, it's a major worry to me that uh, this is going to turn out like uh, Mosgiel swimming pool has with a total Mary name on it. I'm quite happy with a, a English name at the bottom uh, top and Mary name at the bottom, but quite frankly, that's just about where I'll stand. Okay, Don't Alan, did you? Anyway. Well, I was just going to say that, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but when um, Maori give the name like this, it's got nothing to do with the design of anything, it's more about the meaning. Am I right in that? It's got nothing to do with design, so that's why I'm wondering why do you need to revisit it because. I don't think if it looks like a, a whale's tooth, or that makes that that's not what the name is all about. <laughs> am I right when I say that, or am I wrong? Oh, Nehu to tell you the story was behind that was totally. about a whale's tooth. It's the story of Kiwa and Kiwa. Um, so um, the tooth that fell out of the whale's mouth and became um, Solander Island. Um, so if you go back to when that name was offered, the fact that people persisted in calling it the pyramid. Um, actually took away from what the, the gifting of the name was. But if you look at the name that has been proposed for this, and having been privy to some of the design concept, I would say that it still does fit quite well. But I'm not prejudging what Runaka might say. They need, if, if the wish is that they see the design before they confirm the name, then I'm happy to go with that. But I do think that adding the alternative about what the other names that you know, sort of feedback on the Mirihaku versus Southland conversation. Very happy to entertain that as well. As for what happened in Mosgiel, I think people who are getting their knickers in a knot up there need to remember that the name of the stream that they took away from that place is actually being replaced on the landscape by the naming of the pool. So that's their business, that's the choice that they made, but people, when... Runaka asked whether it be here or in Otaka or in Waitaha or whatever, they usually do look back at the landscape and they do look back at the stories of the past when they choose the names that they give. And it's not just looking up in a dictionary something and no, saying, oh, here you go. It's meaningful. It's meaningful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So you were right. Yeah. Uh, Leslie, then Trish. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I'm wondering if perhaps it would help if we added a three that said something along the lines of ask the Runaka to also comment on the use of Southland or Murahiku as the English equivalent name. Hmm. Yeah. What we had originally. I think those are the two words that that we are Trish. talking about in the English. I think that reflects what I was going to say, is that the council, inevitably the council makes a decision, and so we would want the runaka to um, offer their suggestions with regard to murahiku or whatever else, and we would look at those. So, you know, we've got to, we've got to respect them, and as Tom said, it's got to be reciprocal that it comes back to us is that the council can comfortably live with it as well. Yeah. Can, can I comment again? Oh, wait, hang on. No, I've just sorry, got Mia and then Tom. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just wanted to 
reinforce again that I guess not really ask from my perspective not really asking Iwi for uh, their idea on South and that was a position we took to start with when we first started off this project we talked about the South Museum and having some Tereo naming to sit alongside it um, but since then what's evolved is that is it more appropriate to say Marihiku given that to many South and Marihiku is quite a uh, quite a term or a, a name that's well in, in, engaged in our community and whether that would be more reflective of Tereo to have that as well as something else in Tereo and I thought that was quite a positive step but I am mindful of the boundary issues and whether that would sit well with the four Renakas. The other issue I'd have and I think Steve touched on this is um, we do have a degree of urgency with this so our um, our plans are coming out and um, certainly by the sort of the early part of August we need we need as a as a council to decide what our name of our museum is going to be we're doing a lot of promotional work around funders and they need to have some certainty to that there's a bit of an image involved with doing that so yeah, yeah we're not going to be mucking around too much it. no just no. but you know how, how you get back from four renegos does somebody one of the two um, delegates yeah. here take some responsibility for actually coordinating that. I mean, do we have to coordinate it? I mean, so that we get it back on time? I, I can answer that. We've got a combined Renaka meeting at the end of July, so we would be able to do yeah. that. Yeah. But we would have to see the design first. Yeah. So of course. the other predicate for that is that that design will be available for us to yes. show. Well, um, well, I have suggested to Lee, I think he's still here. He's got, done a runner. I mean, I haven't seen the design yet, but I did say to him it's really important while they're keeping that under wraps to show that to Iwi in, in an early stage, even before councils get to see it, so that they can have some idea of what's being proposed. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's been taken into account in terms of that. Yeah. Um, where do we go? Tom, sorry. <coughs> oh, I, I suspect my comment is probably redundant, but I, I, would, I was going to say that when... It seems to me that when it's a, a double-barrelled name, you know, in other words, if it's, you know, Mirahiku Museum or something like that, you know, hyphen to an ear, then the the to real part of the name should absolutely be the decision of the um, iwi. You know, I, I I think you know when you're going to use an English name and a, an iwi name, then you know, then clearly that that call. Where, where it's an individual name, it does seem to me that there needs to be some mutual thought. The, the, the question of gifting, I know we're going to come back to this at another meeting, but the question of gifting, where the implication is that you haven't been gifted it, have to receive it. The problem for me in that is that very often metaphors in one language don't work in the other language. And to be honest, I think this building's an example of that, where you've got a metaphor that works in Tereo that does not actually work in English. And, and you know, so therefore, I think it does need to be a mutual discussion where it's a single name, mm -hmm. where it's a double barreled name. I think it's different because I think, you know, the, the two halves, mm -hmm. the English part, you know, and the, the EV part can be, you know, can be named by each party. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think we've covered that. So, pretty much the discussions that preceded the paper being put together have been reflected in the Council's comment. That's fair, isn't it, Steve? So, very much a united approach, collaborative making sure we take account of, you know, being partners with iwi. We want to have, you know, both English and um, Maori, Tereo Maori reflected in the name and um, the design's a prominent piece of how we get to that naming mm -hmm. process. And then the actual dates line up as well, don't they, around yeah. July, August? Yeah. Which fits in with your concern. Um, Nobby around Just the, one so quick thing. Um, and you've got up there, it's South and Slash Mirahiku. For me personally, I think it should be South and or Yeah, correct. Uh, not hyphenating the two and then having some Tereo after that. It just yeah. it makes it yeah. really we can, disjointed. We can, I mean, I'm we really up to Yeah, one of our Yeah, one yeah. Okay, right. So we've amended yep. the motions. We've had good discussion and thank you for all the input, um, particularly from our mana funeral reps. Um, so a mover and a seconder to thanks, Darren. Thanks, Leslie. So we're receiving. The report approach to naming a museum were approved the proposed approach with the following change that in place of the iwi liaison committee reference to the four um, papatipu runanga of Murahuku and request the runanga to also provide comment on Southland or Murahuku as the English equivalent name. Yep. So, having reflected on that, all those in favour? Aye. 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 Aye
Carried. Well done. Good work. Okay. Okay, so we'll move now to public excluded. So um, moving into that to confirm the minutes of the public excluded meeting on the 18th of April and the 9th of May and the 23rd of May and uh, get sure a, the, um, the live stream has an end. We haven't gone into public. No, no, we've just got to disclose it. Um, for the financial update for 2023, the investment property portfolio update, the business enhancement project, project dashboard, Invercargill Central Monitoring Report and the Invercargill Central Limited Funding Status Report. So can I have a mover and a second to, to receive? Move. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks, Darren. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? Carried. Right. Live stream, turn off. <laughs>